Can you imagine your life where money is your friend, working with you to achieve all your dreams and desires? If you struggle seeing money as your friend, then join Kathy Cook Noble, financial advisor and educator on understanding how your money can work for you. It is possible. Now, here is Financially Speaking with Kathy Cook Noble. Good afternoon and welcome to Financially Speaking on the Inspired Choices Network. I am your host, Kathy Cook Noble, and I come together with you every Monday night and we talk about something financial. And while that sometimes scares people, it's also the opportunity that uh, I like to think that we're we're offering to everyone to learn about your finances a little bit, even the stuff that scares you, uh, the stuff you don't understand, the stuff that confuses you. Uh, I can tell you every one of my shows and and uh, tonight is no exception has come from some suggestion from someone. So during the day, I am a financial advisor and I have a bookkeeping practice and a financial practice where we help businesses uh, with their finances in terms of uh, bookkeeping and accounting and tax planning and estate planning. And um, as a financial advisor, or I help people with financial planning. So what we do here is we take all that stuff that you hear out in the, the outside world uh, and, and frankly, even the stuff that you hear from your financial planner that you don't understand. And we take it and break it down and say, what is it you really need to know? What is it you really want to know? Because frankly, we get overwhelmed with the amount of emails and, and information that gets sent to us and we get overwhelmed by terminology and acronyms and and metrics and math and formulas and all this stuff that that you know tries to make people sound smarter when really they should just break it down for you and give it to you in layman's terms uh, do you really care how the formula came about on how they figure out the beta or how they figure out the rate of return? Do you really care about the math? You care about what your stuff is doing on the investment side. Do you really care about all the six different ways that you can do tax planning if you own four different houses and three yachts like you see on TV? No, you don't care because it doesn't matter to you. It might be interesting and maybe it's a, a nice side read if you want and, and see how does you know people like Warren Buffett and Jeff Bezos uh, do what they do and how is Elon Musk figuring out uh, why he's selling so many billions of dollars in stocks in the last two weeks and what what kind of planning goes into that uh that's interesting and it's it'd be just like an entertainment part for you and an entertainment value for for you to to watch it but the reality is your taxes probably aren't going to be the same as elon musk's and you're probably not worried about selling off so many stocks or shares in tesla or in uh, spacex or in Bezos, in Amazon, and any of these big companies, you're not worried about selling off a billion dollars in shares, uh, shares that you own because you're doing some tax planning in this calendar year. That's not your worry. Um, it would be an interesting worry if you could have it. And maybe that's your goal to have that kind of worry and that kind of issue, uh, which would be great. And I mean, once you get to the point where all you're worrying about is taxes because you're making so much money, then that's a different kind of fun that you have with your money. But for the most part, the people I talk to and the people I see every day, they're looking at how do I make things work for me? How do I make it work for my family? Uh, I have one house, I have you know a car or two cars, maybe you have a boat, maybe you have a cottage or a trailer that you go to or a vacation property. Um, maybe your goal is to have that. And that's what we look at here is, is the daily stuff and the stuff that you understand. And, and before you even got into finance, I always believed that you can understand your own stuff. I, I thought it was a little bit ridiculous that the, the, the industry made it sound so complicated and so hard that you couldn't understand or you were fearful of it or, or embarrassed to ask questions of your advisor. Um, I had many, many of my girlfriends tell me that uh, they're, they're smart, they're educated women, and they feel embarrassed to ask questions because they think they should know. And I think if that's the case, that is entirely the wrong way to be approaching for your advisor to be approaching your finances. You need to understand your stuff. You need to be comfortable and you need to feel like you are um, permitted to ask questions about your stuff. Because the one thing I have learned over the years is nobody cares more than you do about your money. And nobody should care more about you, your money than you do. Um, so when you start having other people that are caring more than you do about your finances, that's when you have a problem because you're not paying attention to it or somebody else is paying 
more attention to it. And that's usually not a good thing if somebody else is more interested in your money than you are. Um, so that's what we do here on Financially Speaking every Monday night. You are always welcome to contact me by email or uh, you can join us live in the chat room. Uh, we go live on Mondays and then we are podcast, our podcast is on over 250 platforms now, uh, as well as television. So for those of you watching it or listening to it, I would encourage you send me if you have a question or a confusion, send it to me and I will tackle it and uh, help you sort through that. Uh, and don't forget, we have um, our app, our, our free app. I mean, we're talking finances here, what gets better than free other than tax free. Uh, but we have our free app. And you can download it on your Android, on your Apple. Uh, really, I tell people there is no excuse for you not to be able to stay connected with us here at the Inspired Choices Network. And not just on the Financially Speaking show, on all the shows, because all the hosts are available for um, questions on the live chat if you want to go in our chat room and share during the live show. And if you can't make it during the live show, that's no problem. You can email afterwards and ask a host a question or um, you know book an appointment if you need to even get that one step further with them. Uh, but all the hosts are very approachable and very um, well-trained and very uh, um, very good in their industry. They're, they're, they're very much the specialist in their area and very approachable. So the Inspire Choices Network, actually, the way I kind of look at it is it's the everything you need to have a happy, healthy, wealthy life. And by that, if you're having an issue with a relationship and you don't quite know how to handle it, or you're having a question about business and you really don't know how to approach it. Maybe you have a small business, you're just starting up, maybe you have a bigger business, maybe you're, you know, just been in business a short time and you aren't sure how to really make it the growth work. Um, we have we have a host for that. Um, if you're having a relationship problem with a partner or a spouse, um, we have a host that can help with that. If you have a you have questions about raising children, we have a host that can help with that. Um, we have uh, our, our our owner of our network, Christine, is always available on coaching and uh, in her in her business as well on the network end and business coaching. But uh, she's also really available for people who have come on as a host. And I say that because there's always opportunity for new hosts to come on. And there are times when people have said, hey, why don't you have such and such on the network? Well, you know what? We don't have that expert yet, but it would be a great idea. And that's when you want to reach out and talk to Christine. It's free to talk to her and she will give you direction. And for people like me, I am the best example because I'm a numbers person. I spend my day. Um, uh, sitting, you know, working numbers, talking to people, putting plans together. And if she can get me to do a podcast and a TV show, and she can help guide me through it when I first got started, then she can help anybody. Trust me when I tell you. So go ahead and reach out to Christine. If you're thinking, geez, I could do that. Or, you know, people always tell me um, I should share my, my insight and my experience with um, everybody on such and such a topic that that would be very beneficial, um, reach out and talk to Christine. That's what the network's for. It's here to make everything better in your life so that you can live your very best life. Um, and, and really it's up to you. And I say that because tonight I am gonna to talk about something I don't normally talk about, and that's gonna be mindset. That is not my area of expertise, um, but tonight is our mishmash show. And I've had all kinds of different little topics come together and, you know, people have little questions about them. So tonight I'm going to ta tackle a few of them. I'm going to talk about a little bit about mindset with money. I'm going to talk a little bit about tax tips since we're coming into the end of the year. And I know, I know I'm thinking about it. So I assume everybody else must be thinking about it and I get questions about it. So I know other people are thinking about it and that is taxes and what we can do with um, the rest of the year. And then what we can do after the rest of the year before we file in April. So let's talk about a little bit about taxes. And we'll talk a little bit about something called paying yourself first. I get I get asked that a lot. Um, for those of you in Canada, you've probably heard of the wealthy barber. David Chilton wrote that. It's a it's a really good, cute, um, easy to read book. Um, it talks a lot about paying yourself first, which I'll talk about uh, tonight. And uh, 
we'll just talk a little bit about all the, the questions I've had in the last several months that people just wanted to have an answer to. So if I hate your topic, that's great. If I don't, then reach out and let me know. And if there's something that you see on the network that's missing, then reach out to Christine and it's C-H-R-I-S-T-I-N-E, Christine at inspiredchoices.ca. Uh, so reach out to Christine and uh, and she'll plug you in as a, as a host. And uh, she's got some phenomenal packages where you can work in on a graduated scale because maybe you're afraid that you don't have the time to commit every week or or you don't know how you will make it work. She can do it. She you, there There is no excuse um, other than you just don't want to do it and don't want to share your wisdom, which I know isn't the case because everyone I talk to is always excited to share their wisdom with people. So feel free to reach out to Christine uh, and download our app. It's free, 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 free. And you can join us live on the app or you can join us in uh, the podcast where you missed a show and you want to plug yourself into that. You can go back and do that as well. So no excuses to not get the app and uh, no excuses not to talk to Christine. So that's the, uh, that's the, the inside information on the Inspire Choices Network. And tonight, our mishmash show, uh, like I mentioned, we're talking about a few different things. So I'm going to start with mindset because what I have found is I talk to a lot of people about money. And here's what I know. I, I am not by any stretch the expert on everything financial. But what I have found in common is the people I know that have a lot of money and the people I know that don't have a lot of money, there's one main difference and that's their mindset. And the reason I don't talk about this is because there's other people on the network who are far more superior than I am on experience with this. This is what they do day in and day out. They help people with their mindset. <clears throat> I think it's fantastic. It's not something I do. It's not something I do in my practice. Uh, at all, like on the, any other financial side, I personally uh, understand it. And I have personally taken courses and, and implemented a lot of what I learned. And I'm going to share with you a little bit of what I learned um, as well. But the main thing that I want to start talking about is people in general don't always understand or aren't even aware that the stuff they tell themselves or the stuff they think or the stuff they read, or the stuff they walk, the, the stuff they watch on TV, um, it has an impact. And I, I did take a course years ago, and I remember the facilitator saying that your, your, your brain is like your hard drive, and what you put on it affects how it operates. <clears throat> so I always think of it like that. And uh, I used to naturally surround myself with positive things. And I used to read a lot of philosophy books and, and inspirational quotations. And um, I, I always, if, if it made me feel better. And I know being busy and in school and running businesses and so on, that you always had to be energetic and maintain a, an, an upbeat attitude towards business. And that is the one thing as I started to study it more formally, I found it's really about your mindset. So mindset obviously can be affecting, be affecting any part of your life, any part of your relationships, any part of your business, um, any part of your money and your financial st status. And that is the one thing as I started talking to different people, people that had many hundreds of millions of dollars and people who were just barely making it paycheck to paycheck. The difference I found in them is the way they look at money, the way they view it, the way, I mean, there's way more to it with mindset, but I'm just, tonight I'm just talking to you about money mindset and how that affects people and their finances. And I can share with you that having talked to the people that have lots and lots of money, their mindset about money is a lot different in the sense of the person who's struggling financially. The person who struggles financially is fixated on how much they do not have and how stressful it is and how tight their budget is and how short on money they are and how they're living paycheck to paycheck and barely making that work. The people that have a lot of money, they're focused on the abundance of money that's out there. To them, they look at and they say, there's lots of money out there. Why would I even have in my head anything that prohibits me from getting it or achieving it. They don't even think about it because in their mind, there's so much money that's available out there. They're just figuring out a way to access it. And 
that's the difference. And most people realize there's a lot of money out there. And especially in this last year, two years, actually, there has been an awful lot of money being spent out there and by many, many countries and governments. And they're kickstarting all these issues in the economies, uh, trying to, I should say, um, they're spending a lot of money is the bottom line. And people can't comprehend a trillion dollars. They can't, a lot of people can't comprehend a million dollars, then a billion dollars, then hundreds of billions and trillions of dollars. That's a huge number to think about. And the governments use those numbers all the time. And people who hear that, they think, oh, that's a lot of money. It's a lot of debt. This a lot of other people here and say, that's a lot of opportunity. There's a lot of money out there. It's all in how you hear it and what your mind processes it as. So tonight I'm talking a little bit about mindset. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about tax tips. We're going to talk a little bit about how to pay yourself first. Um, and then I'm going to talk to you a little bit about something that's upcoming with me. Uh, so don't go anywhere. Uh, we're going to take our first break of the night. You are listening to Financially Speaking on the Inspired Choices Network. And we will be right back. Too many of us get caught up in the unreal lives of reality television and complete to acquire stuff, which is setting us up to accumulate lots of debt. We're scared, confused, and don't know who to talk to. By tuning into Financially Speaking Radio Show with financial advisor and educator Kathy Cook Noble, you'll learn tips you can use to improve your financial health, which in turn can improve your overall health and make for a very happy life. Live a life you can afford and enjoy. It is possible. Listen for Financially Speaking Radio Show every Monday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 3 p.m. Central, 2 p.m. Mountain, and 1 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. This is the Financially Speaking Show with financial advisor and educator Kathy Cook Noble. To participate in the program, join our live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email by sending to Kathy at bookkeepplus.ca. Now back to the program. Welcome back, everyone. You are listening to Financially Speaking on the Inspired Choices Network, and I am your host, Kathy Cook Noble. And tonight's our mishmash, and we're talking about uh, all things financial and several different tips and topics tonight. Um, and just so you know, that break was just enough time for you to have downloaded our free app. So if you haven't done it on our next break, just go ahead and try that and see if you can get it done before the commercial is over. Because I can tell you that you can, that's just that fast and you can get that app downloaded on your Android or your, or your um, iPhone. And uh, it gives you all access all the time to the Inspired Choices Network. So go ahead and download that on the next break if you haven't done that already. And tonight, I mentioned before the break, we're talking about mindset. And I'm going to do something I don't normally do um, on this show. I'm going to share some ideas on all these, uh, you know, three different topics, really. Um, and I'm also going to share you a little bit of personal information. Uh, mindset, is, uh, mindset is your subconscious. And it's, this, it's that voice in your head that you hear that tells you you can or you can't. Um, now, from a personal point of view, I've always believed you can, and I was lucky that I grew up in a family business that's uh, celebrating 94 years, actually, last month, and uh, the, the, the possibilities and the opportunities uh, that you always talk about, and it was it's a blessing. It's also a curse, because for those of you who have read my book, All Ladies Should Use the F Word, 
Um, it's a guide to finance, understanding your finances. That shares a little bit about my story. And we all struggled through some personal stuff. And I'm no exception. I've been through that as well. The, the difference for the way I went through uh, my struggle was the way I came out. Because my mindset was, uh, yes, I can and I will. And there's a big difference between when you think I can't do it versus it's not even I can do it. There was no option. Like you will do it. And one of my favorite, favorite people in the world <laughs> that I that I watch, and not just because he's a phenomenal basketball player, is Michael Jordan. And I've I've always liked basketball and and I am slightly shorter than six feet tall. So I used to play basketball a little bit. Um, but one of my favorites is uh, Michael Jordan. And I like Michael Jordan because he is an awesome basketball player. Like there's no getting around it, but he's also got an amazing mindset and his view on life is very present. He lives in the moment every single instant. He is in the moment and he's not thinking about what could go wrong and what did go wrong and why didn't I make that last shot? Uh, and one of my one of my favorite quotes is uh, when he said uh, when people ask him about taking you know does he worry about taking uh, missing a shot when he takes it when there goes pressure shots and all that and he said why would I worry about a shot I haven't taken and that's so true and that's for everything in life why are you worrying about something you haven't even tried you know it could fail it could not work and what if I look like a fool what if this happens what if that happens what if it goes well. <laughs> You know, Jeff Bezos, uh, who I have a lot of respect for his his business mind, um, he started Amazon. For those of you who, who aren't a big Jeff Bezos fan or know who he is, um, he started Amazon. And he was making great money working on Wall Street, like huge money. Any, by any other standards, you wouldn't quit your job for that. But he had this idea that, you know, the Internet might be something. And I, I want to. I think it would be a good idea to sell books on the internet is really what it came down to. And he talked to his wife and, and said, this is my thought. And instead of saying, Oh, you're, why would you quit your job making several six figures in his case, probably seven at the time. Um, why would you quit that to do something like that? It's so risky. And instead he, he does what I think is brilliant is uh, risk minimization is his life's is his, his whole life is based on risk minimize or um, sorry, regret minimization and regret minimization is he, he asks his 30 year old self, he sits down, he says, if I or 80, he sits down, he says, if I'm 80 years old and I'm trying to minimize my regrets in life, am I going to regret having done this or am I going to regret having not done this? And if the answer is, I'm going to regret not having done this. So he sat down when he was about 20 something, maybe almost 30 years old. And he said to, to his, his 80 year old self, um, should I quit my job and try this business idea that I have? And his 80 year old self thought, I'm going to regret not trying this. So he said, that's my answer. People get overwhelmed in their own mind sometimes. And, and I'm not saying everything you should do, you just make it without any thought or analysis. I mean, he clearly had, he had an analysis on what the probability was of it succeeding. It was very low and the probability of return on investment was very low, but his, he, he said to himself, am I going to regret having not tried it or am I going to regret having tried it? And if you regret, if you say to yourself, I'm going to regret having tried this because if it doesn't work out and this and that, and I'm never going to be able to live with myself, that's a different answer that you're coming to. But if you say, I'm going to regret not having tried it, then that's your answer on how you're going to proceed. And mindset is all about how you're going to work with your subconscious and that voice in your head and how you're going to feel about it. So whether it's good or whether it's a bad uh, decision that you have to make, um, your mindset is going to affect how you make them. And I find that uh, there's a lot of people and it's a really a scarcity versus abundance mindset. And uh, you hear about this all the time when you study it and you see different people like Tony Robbins and uh, Bob Proctor and all these guys that that talk about scarcity versus abundance. And um, and they're all right. As far as I'm concerned, it's all true, because in the real world, every day when we're seeing and talking to people, um, it really is about do you see abundance or do you see scarcity. And 
the people who see abundance are almost always in my practice, they're almost always the people that have the most money is because they can see the opportunities of any kind of opportunity and they can see the abundance out there. There is a lot of money out there. I'm telling, I know there's a lot of money out there. There's, there's so much money out there. And the question is, are you interested in acquiring it? Uh, And how much do you want? Now, some people I talk to, their retirement is, everyone's retirement is different. And I tell everybody this all the time on the show. uh, And I probably say it like a broken record every night on the show. But every single one of you is is unique and different. I don't care if you're identical twins that married identical twins, (laughs) you're still unique and different because your goals are different. Your needs are different. What makes you happy is different. Some people to be happy, they need to travel. They need to be dripping in diamonds and they need to have multiple houses and, and, and staff for staffing their house, uh, multiple cars. And that's, that's happiness to them. Uh, Other people, their happiness is having a book sitting in a swing in the backyard where it's quiet and at peace and with nature um, and time to themselves. Everyone's happiness is different. And how you get there is how you're dependent on what your mindset is. So people who are interested in having lots and lots of money for different reasons, some are because they want to make big donations to charity. Uh, Some people are because they have a lifestyle that they want that requires a lot of money. Some people's lifestyle is their retirement is happy because it's based on a certain amount of money that isn't as much as somebody else's, but it's good for them. So your mindset on on how you achieve it and when you achieve it and whether or not you can achieve it is is a huge important thing for people to really be aware of. So a scarcity mindset just to give you an idea and if this is you don't worry because it can all be changed and it can all be improved and you can work on it. Uh, but a, a scarcity mindset is someone who's always fighting to make a couple bucks. How am I going to do this? You're stressed about the bills or am I going to have money for the phone bill? Am I going to have money for the dentist? My kids need a filling or I need to buy groceries. Um, You you complain about paying taxes. Uh, You resist giving anything away because you're afraid that uh, I might need that down the road. I've had it for 20 years in my basement, never opened it, but I might need it. Um, You're just always worrying about having leftovers and not having enough. And uh, you're just not making it and you feel broke mentally. That is something about, that is a scarcity mindset. And some of those beliefs, a lot of people, and I hear this a lot in my practice are, I'm not good with money. Um, Someone else is going to take care of it for me. Um, People with money are greedy, or I'm not smart enough. I'm not talented enough. I wasn't born in the right family. I'm not privileged enough. I don't have enough education. Um, There's all these things that I hear them say that is a scarcity mindset. So to give you an idea of the opposite of that, which is an abundance mindset, is you appreciate what you have, Um, whether it's your house, and it doesn't matter the condition of your house. You could be living in a house that needs a ton of repairs, but you're happy in it. You appreciate the fact that you have your house and the opportunity to do the repairs. You appreciate that you have a private jet or you have a yacht. You appreciate that. you, you're generous with other people where you could bring them in and have dinner or invite them at Christmas Eve to your house for dinner if they have nowhere to go or no family. Um, you have confidence in your ability to make money and you know there's always enough and you think there's always enough because you know there's a lot of money out there um, and you enjoy sharing the wealth and you always believe that the money is going to be there for your bills and your groceries and so forth. Um, some of the people that have an abundance mindset, you hear them say stuff like, I love learning about money. I can take charge of my finances. I can understand that. Um, money gives people the opportunity to contribute to others in a very powerful and impactful way. Um, I'm always just enough the way I am. I'm happy with the way I am. Um, I know I can make more money. I don't know where it's coming from, but I have faith that I'm going to have it when I need it. Those are all things that I hear abundance people say. And like I mentioned, the abundance people that I know uh, that have a significant wealth, they talk like that. And what's the worst? What's the worst that can happen? You know, so it doesn't work out. I'll do something else. There's all kinds of opportunities out there. So that's a little bit about mindset. I know it's uh, 
just a tiny, tiny, tiny little bit that we scratch the surface with. And you'll want to watch and talk to the experts on the, the network who really do work in mindset and understand it and are able to help you shift your mindset and shift the way you think about things. Because we're going to talk after the break, we're going to talk about some money tips and some paying yourself first um, ideas. But the the reality is, is when you get your mind your the shifting your mindset and you start to really see the abundance uh you start to see things really grow and that's when you really can turn it on and have the opportunities come to you because you're now looking at that instead of attracting uh the the scarcity stuff to you and the whole law of attraction uh um self-fulfilling prophecy all that is a whole other uh, conversation but what you put out there and what you get back it, it's no coincidence that they're a match the energy that you emit is the same that you're getting back. So when people say, well, I don't understand why I, if it's going to happen, it happens to me or it's all my, all my luck. It always happens to me. I'm going to be the one that is in a rush and has a flat tire. Of course you are because you're putting it out there. So that's part of your mindset. And hopefully that's, this isn't something I've tackled before, but I see it a lot. I get asked about it a lot. We talk about it a lot, actually, um, even in my office with, uh, with our staff. Uh, it's important to really understand what you're putting in your mind and uh, what you're programming yourself to, to think, because that's going to lead to the next part about how you make more money, how you keep more money. And that's what we're going to talk about next. So don't go anywhere. You are listening to Financially Speaking on the Inspired Choices Network. You have time. Go download the app. We'll be right back. Too many of us get caught up in the unreal lives of reality television and complete to acquire stuff, which is setting us up to accumulate lots of debt. We're scared, confused, and don't know who to talk to. By tuning into Financially Speaking Radio Show with financial advisor and educator Kathy Cook Noble, you'll learn tips you can use to improve your financial health, which in turn can improve your overall health and make for a very happy life. Live a life you can afford and enjoy. It is possible. Listen for Financially Speaking Radio Show every Monday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 3 p.m. Central, 2 p.m. Mountain, and 1 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Money is complicated, right? Actually, no, it's not. You don't have to be a trader on Wall Street to get a handle on your money. TV shows often instill fear to keep you believing you can't understand it or do anything yourself. If dealing with your finances brings up a lot of other F-words, then you need to read All Ladies Should Use the F-Word, A Guide to Loving Your Finances by Kathy Cook Noble. Kathy helps you take control of your finances and leave the other F-word, fear, in the dust. How wonderful would it be to carry your favorite Inspired Choices Network host with you throughout your day? Well, now you can. Inspired Choices Network now has its very own mobile app. Our free app offers live streaming shows along with thousands of podcasts and TV episodes. Our shows cover a wide variety of topics. Whether you're waking up with us, carrying us through the day, and taking us to bed with you, we're always here for you to enjoy. We're easy to find. Just search for Inspired Choices Network in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. This is the Financially Speaking Show with financial advisor and educator Kathy Cook Noble. To participate in the program, join our live studio audience in our chat room at InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email by sending to Kathy at bookkeepplus.ca. Now back to the program. Welcome back, everyone. You are listening to Financially Speaking on the Inspire Choices Network. And I'm your host, Kathy Cook Noble. And tonight is our Mishmash show. We're talking about a few different things and working our way through helping with a couple topics that come up quite regularly and mindset, money mindset is always one of them. And that's what we were talking about before the break. And now I want to shift into another mishmash question that I get. And this is the how, what is this pay yourself first? So we hear about this um, 
pretty regularly, really. And they, they word it differently, you know, pay yourself first, set 10% aside. And there's all kinds of different ways you can do it. Um, uh, but the, here's the reality of it. This is what pay yourself first is. Uh, the whole book, The Wealthy Barber, is based on this concept. And David Chilton wrote, it's a very good book. And it's very easy to understand. It's a good financial literacy book, if you will. And the idea is you set, now in this case, a lot of people say 10%. So you take 10% off the top. Pay yourself first is exactly that. If you, Think of it like this. If you are the government, who gets paid first in their world? They do, because your taxes get paid. So you, pay your, you always pay your taxes first uh, because it automatically gets calculated, right? So, I mean, I know people haven't paid their taxes. I get it, but you still owe it. <laughs> so the government is very good at paying themselves first. Now, how do you pay yourself first? It's kind of like um, a reverse budget. So think of it like this. You make so much money a month, and we're going to say it's $4,000, $2,000. Pick a number. It doesn't matter. If you take the 10% rule, you take 10% off the top, $200 comes off. That means you only have, out of $2,000 a month, you have $1,800 that's actually your money. Because the first thing you did was you paid yourself. And by paying yourself, that means you set that money aside in a savings or an investment account towards your future or towards your um, retirement. It's towards your future, no matter what. It could be your future self that needs uh your retirement money, but it could be your future self that needs, has an emergency that needs to replace the dishwasher, or it could be your future self that wants to go on a trip and wants to have the money set aside, or your future self needs to replace the vehicle or get maintenance done on it or repairs done on it, whatever the case is. Um, but the pay yourself first, that's what it's for. It's for your future self for something. So you take a certain amount off and there's different ways you can do it. You can say, I'm going to take 10% off the top and that's going towards myself. That's what the wealthy barber does in a nutshell. You take your 10%. So my $2,000 a month is now really only $1,800 a month. And out of that $1,800, that's where everything else gets paid. <clears throat> that's where my mortgage comes out or my rent comes out. That's where my uh, utility bills come out. That's where my insurance comes out. That's where my gift purchasing comes out. That's where my entertainment comes out. That's where my gym membership comes out of. That is your money that is for you to live on and budget. <clears throat> so that's not one of these things where when you pay yourself first, it's done immediately. It's like your taxes. You owe a certain amount of money in taxes. You have to pay that amount of money. In this case, you have to pay your 10% if that's the number. The other way you could do it is you could say, I need you reverse engineer it. And I need, um, I need $150 a month to meet my required retirement plan. So I figured out how much I need in retirement and I know how many years I have to save for it. And that means I have to contribute $150 a month or whatever the number is. So that $150 comes out regardless. So if you made $2,000 a month or you made $1,500 a month, $150 comes out. And that goes to your retirement plan because that is you paying yourself first so that you have that money in your retirement down the road. So you can do it either way. Pick a number, pick a percentage and do it or pick an, an amount and make it work. But base it on um, whatever it is. Like if you're taking a certain amount out, make sure it's based on a reason. Like, you know, you could pick $300 a month out of the air. But if, you're, if your retirement plan requires 350, then you're not going to get there. So if you're doing it based on a retirement plan or you're doing it based on, say, I need to have three months of um, expenses saved up in case of emergency. So that means it's $1,000 a month to run my house. I need $3,000. I always need to be putting money aside for that. And I always need to be putting money aside for my investments. Plus, I have kids. So at the end of the day, I need $500 a month. So I make 3,000 coming into the house. That gives me $2,500 for groceries and mortgage and car and needs, et cetera, et cetera. So that's one way. There are a couple of ways that you could actually do that to pay yourself first. And the pay yourself first concept is really about um, you're working hard. It doesn't matter. I don't care what you're making. I don't care how much you bring home. Uh, you are working hard as a person who's working full time. 
and you're or, or, or working full time in the house or outside of the house, just to be clear, because there's a lot of work in the house as well. So if you're working very hard for your money and you're not keeping any for yourself, what is that going to do for your mindset? You're going to get yourself into that scarcity mindset. I never have any left over at the end of the paycheck. And, you know, I never have enough to do entertainment. I never have enough for, I'm not going to have enough to retire. Of course you're not because that's, you're in that perpetual cycle. But when you say, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to figure out how much cash I have coming in. And I hear this, you hear me say this all the time about tracking your cash. I tell people this on a daily basis, what you need to know we don't need to be fancy and do spreadsheets. You're welcome to use Excel. It's one of my favorite programs. If you're like me and you love Excel and it's easier for you, use it. If you like pen and paper, that works too. You need to know how much money is coming in and how much money is going out of your house every month. So if I know that I'm bringing $3,000 a month into my house and I know how much my mortgage is and I know how much my car payment is, and I know how much roughly I spend on groceries and, and I know how much money I need to retire that gets worked in to the number. And, and if you're finding that, well, I'm not, I don't have enough money to make all this happen. Then you need to do one of two things. Cause there's only two ways to make more money. It's increase your income or decrease your expenses. It's that simple. And what matters in money is how much you keep. So when you see all these celebrities who have owe so much money in taxes and have all these issues and have declared bankruptcies. You think, how can they declare bankruptcy? They've handled millions and millions and millions of dollars because it doesn't matter what you handle. It's what you, it matters what you keep. There are very uh, well-adjusted and financially savvy people who are making 40 or $50,000 a year because they're very good with their money and they're very aware of their money. And by good with their money, it's, a, I mean, awareness. A lot of people have no idea that they're spending five, $10 a day on coffee. And when you think, well, you know, $5 coffee, you know, I go through and I, I deserve it. I hear that a lot. Susie Orman <laughs> is the one about you call her and can I afford it? And it's the big thing about, do I, I deserve it? Well, we all deserve to have a great life. There's no question. Everybody out there deserves to have a great life. The question becomes, can I afford it? What I consider is a great life. Yes, you can. If you have the right mindset and if you track your cash. So what you want to do is, is track your cash and paying yourself first is part of tracking your cash. It's part of making it, making it um, part of your daily routine. And it just becomes a, a natural thing for you to do that you're going to pay yourself first. It's no different than when you get your money and you see these shows where it's cash and you put so much cash in a jar for your house and you put so much cash in your jar for gifts and so much cash for entertainment, whatever the case is. It's the same idea. You put so much cash in the jar, the proverbial jar, or you can do actual jars, whatever works. Um, and when it, that money goes into your future self, and then you have a category that's for home and renovation and repairs for vehicles and, and uh, that kind of thing. And that's the money that goes in there. So you always have it. So, you know, your mortgage is paid. So we're going to make sure we pay ourselves. We make sure our housing is secure and that we have money to pay for our house. We want to make sure now groceries, we want to make sure we have money for groceries, but we can be careful. And, and believe me, I understand the price of food is rising as we speak. <laughs> it's getting pretty crazy, but you can control how much you spend on groceries because you don't have to buy filet mignon. You can easily buy something else that tastes good too. You don't have to buy the sparkling expensive waters. You can buy something that tastes well as, as good too. Now, is it, is it wrong to once in a while buy the steak or, or buy the champagne? Not if you can afford it, not if, not if it's uh, something that's in your budget and your monetary plan, of course you can, but the coffees, the two, three coffees every day, could you do that cheaper? Could you just, could you still drink coffee in the morning and not buy it? Of course you can. We all did it before. So that's one area. And I say that because that one comes up an awful lot when I deal with people and, and their financial planning part. And they very often do not realize how much money is being spent on outside food and coffee. Uh, now, I totally get that uh, it's convenient. <laughs> and I totally get that we're living busy and fast paced lives. 
But guess what a little bit of planning does? You can easily take five minutes before you go to bed and lay out what you're going to take for lunch and set your coffee pot up so that you can start a coffee when you get up in the morning or tea or whatever it is that you drink, if you drink those. Uh, yes, you can absolutely do that. And you will save money every year by doing that. So that money that you're paying out is money you're not paying for you and your family. So just think of it like this, how, and, and, and actually I've done this with people, um, is this coffee worth? And you can be very easily calculate. There's lots of calculators to do this. If I'm making $5 a day, if I'm investing $5 a day, seven days a week for the next 30 years, is this $5 coffee worth $50,000 towards my future self's retirement? That's what you can ask yourself. And when you say, yeah, yeah, that coffee is worth $50,000 or whatever, however it turns out, then I guess you buy it. But if you say, wow, this coffee is not worth 50000 for my future self, I'm going to make my coffee and take it with me. Now you're starting to change your mindset and how you look at, coffee, at how you look at money. Um, and you're not denying yourself drinking coffee. You're just changing the way that you do it. So that's part of the way that you can pay yourself first. Um, and when you start to do that, you see money come up. It's incredible when I see people, when their mindset changes, when they start to see some results too. But your results come when your mindset changes. So it's kind of a, a, a neat circle, but it's very, very connected. So keep that in mind when uh, you're starting to shift your mindset and how you're going to pay yourself first. We're going to take our last break of the night. And when we come back, we'll talk a little bit about tax planning since we're coming into that. That's a season, believe it or not. I know we're coming into the Christmas season, but we're also coming into a tax season. So don't go anywhere. We're going to talk briefly about taxes. You're listening to Financially Speaking on the Inspired Choices Network, and I'm your host, Kathy Cook-Noble. I'll be right back. Will you take a break and download the app? Too many of us get caught up in the unreal lives of reality television and complete to acquire stuff, which is setting us up to accumulate lots of debt. We're scared, confused, and don't know who to talk to. By tuning into Financially Speaking Radio Show with financial advisor and educator Kathy Cook-Noble, you'll learn tips you can use to improve your financial health, which in turn can improve your overall health and make for a very happy life. Live a life you can afford and enjoy. It is possible. Listen for Financially Speaking Radio Show every Monday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 3 p.m. Central, 2 p.m. Mountain, and 1 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. This is the Financially Speaking Show with financial advisor and educator Kathy Cook-Noble. To participate in the program, join our live studio audience in our chat room at InspireChoicesNetwork.com. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email by sending to Kathy at BookKeepPlus.ca. Now back to the program. Welcome back, everyone. You are listening to Financially Speaking with me, your host, Kathy Cook-Noble, and this is the Inspired Choices Network. And tonight, it's been a bit of a mishmash. We're talking about uh, different topics that we've, we've tackled a little bit of, but we just <clears throat> put a little bit more focus on tonight. And we talked about mindset and how important money mindset in our case, mindset's important in general, but uh, specifically on the financially speaking show, money mindset is really our key. So uh, we talked a little bit about that and we talked a little bit about how we can pay and why we would pay ourselves first. And we're getting into now uh, tax season. And taxes, and I don't care where you are, December 31st is coming up for everybody, no matter what part of the world you're in. And what happens on December 31st is that is the very last day of the year where we can do anything that makes, uh, we can do most things that are going to make the big difference on your taxes. And after that, January 1st, you've got a new year, taxes are due in April. And in Canada, really the only thing that you can do is an RSP contribution to reduce the tax is owing on this tax return and and instead projected into the future. And keep in mind, and I'm not talking about RSPs tonight uh, in that sense, but th- just keep in mind, RSPs are a deferral of taxes, okay? And people get excited thinking, I'm going to get a rebate because I put money in RSP. Yeah, you're going to get a refund. Yes, you are going to get money back. 
but that money you get back is the taxes that you would be paying had you not done the RSP contribution. The RSP, it's similar to the states with your uh, 401ks, it reduces your amount of money that you're going to pay right now on your taxes. And instead, you're saying, I want to push that into the future and pay that when I'm in my 70s. But there's a lot of people, <clears throat> excuse me, there's a lot of people that get all choked up about RSPs, especially when they're older, because now, guess what? The tax man is calling because you deferred paying the taxes into the future. So this is all important stuff that's part of your overall financial plan. And this is where tax planning comes in and where you want to talk to your advisor if you have one. If you don't, you don't have to have an advisor. Like I always tell you, you can do it yourself. You just have to listen to Financially Speaking. Or you could read the book, uh, All Ladies Should Use the F Word. <clears throat> See, even I get all choked up talking about taxes. But what we're going to talk about is some tips that we should be thinking about with uh, getting ready for tax season. <clears throat> and one of those things is, one of those things are in Canada, we had what was called a work, re uh, <clears throat> excuse me, we had a, a COVID related work expense. And what the government said in uh, 2020 was eligible workers who worked remotely could deduct up to $400 in home expenses from their taxable income. And this was without the need to keep receipts or get assigned <clears throat> sorry, T2200, which is a T2200.200 form from their employer, uh, because that's normally what you would do. But the government said, hey, you know what, we're going to just allow it across the board, everybody gets the 400 bucks. So, <clears throat> sorry, hold that thought. Okay, I know it's just so exciting talking about taxes and how we're going to save money. Um, but what the government has said is they've also promised to simplify the deduction through to 2022 tax year, and they're going to increase the allowable amount to $500. So these are all things we want to, some of the things we want to do to get ready for taxes. We want to start saving our receipts if we haven't already, which is a good idea throughout the year. Um, we want to start thinking about what our future is going to look like in terms of retirement. Do we need to do an RSP contribution? Anything that happens before December 31st, that affects your taxes in April. The only thing that happens after December 31st is up till March, and that's your RSPs. Now, when I say, what else can you do? This is where we talk about charity receipts. This is where we talk about um, if you're in business, uh, um, tax, some tax planning. So, for example, and I won't get into all of the, the details, that's for sure, because it's a whole other show, but um transfers and swaps in your investments um tfsa contributions they do not affect your taxes and neither do the withdrawals they do not affect your tax return tfsas um <clears throat> investment expenses if you have to pay those you want to look at that you want to look at um, income splitting which your accountant or your tax preparer would do for you if you have families, you want to look at RESP contributions because you, if, if you're doing RESPs for education, then you want to get the grant in the, the calendar year um, because you can only have it carry forward for two years. So uh, you might want to max it out this year. And then if you want to do it again in January, maybe you got a bonus, then you can do it again in January. And that goes towards the next, ta the next calendar year so you can get more grant. Um, maybe you have interest on student loans that need to be paid. Um, if you have a family with anyone with disabilities, RDSPs, registered disability savings plans are stuff we should look at. And uh, same, same, they're similar idea as the RESP, the education plan, is the um, grant, accessing the full grant. Charitable donations, how you do them, either by cash or by equities or um, actual uh, <clears throat> securities that you're donating give you a different um, breakdown on tax planning. So these are some of the things that you're going to want to talk to. Start making a list and start uh, start the conversation now. You don't have to wait till April. So you can talk to your tax planner and say, hey, what can we do? So those are some things that we want to look at uh, as far as tax tips. Just starting to get ready. Don't You don't have to wait till the first of the year. You can start now. And that's the cool thing about having a great money mindset is this is another way we're going to be better with our money. So join us every week here on Financially Speaking. And we'll tackle another topic. And next week, we'll be back in the same place.
Thank you for choosing to listen to Financially Speaking Radio Show. Kathy Cook Noble will return next Monday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 3 p.m. Central, 2 p.m. Mountain, and 1 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. We hope you'll join us. Until then, have the best week of your life by making the choices that bring you all that you desire.